Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss even more of the worst businesses to be featured on 24 Hours to Hell and Back and reveal how they're doing now. So sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. La Serenata Visiting the failing La Serenata in Los Angeles, California, Gordon Ramsay attempts to rescue it from closure. Owned by a mother named Aurora, she gave the managerial duties to her son Marco Sr. and he gave the chef's position to his son Marco Jr. Considering the fact that the restaurant was open in the mid-80s and hasn't been updated since, it's safe to say that it's quite outdated. However, since Aurora built the place from the ground up with her late husband, she doesn't want to let go of the past and isn't open to change. This causes a lot of clashes between the owner and her son, who wants to bring the restaurant to the modern times. Aside from the fact that the constant bickering creates a toxic atmosphere for the staff and patrons alike, the owner had to sell her home and her two other businesses to keep the place afloat. Being months away from closing down, the family decided to call out to Ramsey for some much needed help. Upon his eventual arrival, Ramsey disguises himself as a tourist and enters the restaurant with a busload of people. Ordering some staple Mexican dishes from the menu, they're only disgusted with what they receive, but are even more disturbed to see the waiter sweat right into their food as he serves them. Nasty. Having seen more than enough, the famous chef takes off his disguise, gathers the staff together, and shows them some damning footage he recorded. Not only are Aurora and Marco shown constantly arguing, but the kitchen staff was caught serving spoiled food to customers and carelessly cross-contaminating their cooking surfaces. Soon after, Ramsey holds a staff meeting to get a complete understanding of the issues at hand. According to Marco, he and his mother haven't given up on things, but the staff is where the problems truly lie. On the other hand, Ramsey is revealed by just about everyone else that there isn't any leadership and that the management is the problem. Following this interaction, the 24 Hours to Hell and Back host heads into the kitchen to inspect things and finds rotting produce, frozen chicken, and kale that smells rancid. Forcing the staff to clean the kitchen and discard all the spoiled food, Ramsey talks to both Aurora and Marco to set things straight. Surprisingly, Marco admits that he doesn't step up as much as he should, but the famous chef reassures him that it'll help him if he puts in a bit more effort. Later on, Ramsey shows the staff how to make some of the dishes on their updated menu and leaves them to be trained by his team for the rest of the night. Hoping to motivate the restaurant team even further, the famous chef shows them even more footage, but it's a video of the family working together from the very beginning. Reminding them that they carry the weight of the father's legacy on their shoulders, they really need to work hard for him. Following some additional training and modernizing the interior to make it more appealing, La Serenata was ready to relaunch. All in all, even though the staff was nervous and made a couple mistakes at first, the patrons were shocked with how fantastic their experience was. After the taping of this episode, it seems like the management decided to return to their old ways and brought back their old menu. While it's shocking news to hear, the restaurant is still up and running to this day with a solid 4 stars on Yelp. Many seem to praise the fresh food and the vegetarian slash vegan options, but others complain about the poor service quality. Vasi's Restaurant and Bar For a season 2 episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to Waterbury, Connecticut to rescue Vasi's Restaurant and Bar from closure. Owned by Vasilios Kalidis aka Vasi and his mother, he opened the place in 2002 to follow in his parents' footsteps who were veterans in the restaurant industry. Though after his father passed away in 2008, things only went downhill to the point that the restaurant is $500,000 in debt and on the verge of closing down. Not knowing how to move forward, the owners called out to Ramsay and his team for some much needed help. When he finally arrives, Ramsay goes undercover as usual and disguises himself with a beard and a wig. Confused by the menu, the famous chef fails to understand why there's French onion soup in an Italian restaurant. Ordering some staple dishes like calamari, which was rubbery and old, shrimp that tasted rancid, and clams that were clearly spoiled, the famous chef was disgusted. Finally taking off his disguise, Ramsay's presence seems to intimidate a chef named Val who immediately wants to leave, but the famous chef kindly reassures her that he's not there to put her down, but just wants to help. Gathering the staff together, Ramsay brings them to his Hell on Wheels truck to show them some hidden footage that he captured. What they see is Vasi being abusive to the staff, the kitchen using frozen produce, and fruit flies making their way onto the food. Additionally, Val is shown dipping her fingers and licking them, as well as a chef dropping food on the floor and serving it to a customer. How disgusting. Oddly, the owner barely has a reaction to the footage and when confronted about it, he just expresses that he's tired. Later on, Ramsey briefly talks with Vasi's mother, Tula, who reveals that her son owes her a whopping $250,000. To get a better idea as to why the restaurant is failing so miserably, Ramsey heads into the kitchen and is shocked to find spoiled shellfish which Vasi is pushing Val to serve. Despite her attempts to tell him that it would be a terrible idea to give them to customers, Vasi wouldn't listen which results in the cook deciding to leave. Ramsey, of course, chases after her and helps her understand that the restaurant would fail without her help. Thankfully, after Val has a one-on-one -on -one with the owner, she grows a lot more confident that he's going to change. Now that the staff was seemingly on the same page, Ramsay introduces the new menu which would have a Greek influence. 
While the changes seem to really anger the owner, the famous chef reminds him that he has to let go of the past and rebuild things if he wants to succeed. After hours of renovating, Ramsay finally shows off the changes made to the staff, starting with the kitchen which received tons of new equipment and then the dining room which had improved decor. Upon the restaurant's eventual relaunch, food critics and bloggers alike filled up the dining room and were ultimately impressed with their experience. Several months after the taping of this episode, Vasily revealed that his customers loved the new concept and more importantly, that he finally started to get along with Val. However, a while later, he decided to not only change the name to Vasi's Taverna, but also reverted back to the old menu, claiming that the customers demanded it. Regardless of the fact that their customer numbers peaked thanks to Ramsey's changes, he decided to reverse it anyway. In the end, the restaurant closed down in January of 2020, since the owner received an offer that he couldn't refuse, but that fell through. Since he thought the deal was assured, he let his entire staff go and was forced to keep the restaurant closed until he found another buyer. Brownstone Bistro in a season 1 episode, Ramsey heads over to Brownstone Bistro in Los Angeles, California to bring it back on its feet. Owned by a man named Clive Jackson, he decided to purchase the business 5 years prior to the taping of this episode, but has been struggling to get by. While the place was once booming with business, things quickly took a turn for the worse when Jackson lost his son. Feeling an overwhelming sense of sorrow, the restaurant's standards really deteriorated as a result. Unsure of how to recover, Jackson desperately calls out to Ramsey and his team for some guidance. Arriving in a disguise, Ramsey enters with a group of local food critics and notices that there isn't a host to greet them and that the servers aren't smiling when serving guests. Ordering some staple dishes from the menu, the group is unimpressed with their meals and they all think the food tastes dreadful. Fed up with what he's seeing, Ramsey removes the disguise and directs the staff to his Hell on Meals truck so he could show them the footage that he captured. What they're shown are clips of the staff goofing off while working and engaging in unsanitary practices while preparing food. Oddly, the general manager Nicole starts laughing while watching the staff do anything but their job and when confronted by Ramsey about it, she gets defensive and rude. Heading back into the restaurant with the staff, the famous chef reads out some of the reviews, which include complaints about the food being cold, the staff being distracted, and there being terrible wait times. Ramsey then tells the staff that they need to show their commitment if they want him to help the restaurant, which results in the line cook Terrence deciding to quit. Later on, the 24 hours to Hell and Back host heads into the kitchen to inspect things and finds bags of produce with no dates or organization. What's more, the food prep area is caked in dirt and the grill is covered in grease which left the owner feeling embarrassed. Having a one-on-one -on -one soon after with the owner in his office, he reveals that he's grieving over the loss of his son who was tragically shot. To make matters even worse, the pressure the restaurant put on his marriage was too great to the point that his wife left and took his daughter with her. Moved by his tragic story, Ramsey promises Clive that he's committed to bring back his passion for cooking and to restore his failing restaurant. After countless hours of renovating, training, and facilitating a reconciliation between Clive and his wife, Brownstone Bistro was given the second chance it needed. Months after the taping of this episode, the business's sales certainly increased and the customers were ecstatic with the changes made. Aside from the fact that the reviews were mostly positive after Ramsey left, the restaurant oddly closed down in October of 2018. Even though it did reopen briefly with new owners, it's listed as closed on their Yelp page, so it's safe to assume that this rescue ended in failure. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.